Now, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Let's go ahead and get right in here and head straight for the tracking station because, as you may recall, we have something of a situation here. We have the heavy craft Mark III in orbit, a very high, very elliptical orbit. That is the result of its attempt to return to Kerbin from its trip to Minmus. And it has, as you can see, it's already gone around almost all the way one time, and it's been in flight for quite a while. So let's go ahead and have a look here and uh, see what we can do about this situation. Now, Mission Control has been busily trying to come up with a way to return these guys. And while the display shows full tanks, that is actually a bug or something because the fuel tanks, as you can see, are empty. So they've got this great big huge whale of a ship with no fuel. And here they are in a really, really far orbit. And so finally Jebediah has suggested a course of action. It's a course of action that has people at Mission Control rather upset and quite disbelieving of the whole thing because what he suggested they do absolutely nothing the idea being as you can see here the ship's orbit crosses the moon's orbit twice on its path and because the ship and the moon are traveling at different rates it is only a matter of time before the ship and the moon arrive at one of these two points close enough together for there to be an encounter. This doesn't mean that they should land on or crash on the moon, because obviously they have no fuel, they cannot maneuver. They have lots of RCS fuel, but the ship design team made the horrible mistake of not putting any RCS thrusters on this ship, so those RCS fuel tanks are useless. And so all they can do is continue to orbit. They've been in flight for 6 days and 15 hours, and they're going to be in flight for some time to come. Because even should this, this uh, encounter occur, it may take a while. So now what I'm going to do is accelerate time. Excuse me, the ship is not under acceleration. That's the problem. I'm going to accelerate time up to 1000x. Actually 10,000x during this high part of the orbit. When I get in towards the moon, I'm going to step it down to 1,000x because uh, I honestly believe that the physics engine can tend to be a little less accurate at high time acceleration, especially when you're close to a gravitational encounter like we're looking for from the moon. So as we get close in here like this, I step down to 1,000x and stay that way as I come in, move around Kerbin, and fly back out, and then once I get back about this far out, I'll step back up to 10,000 next to speed through the longer part of the orbit. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this, take my time, and uh, I'm going to look for that encounter. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out all of that time, because it's going to take a while and I will check back in when we have an encounter. Okay, as you can see here now, we have an encounter coming up. It's going to be in four days, which is how long it's going to take them to orbit around to it. And you can notice that uh, my uh, projection here is a little bit different. I've made it edit a couple of edits in the uh, settings.cfg file in the KSP directory and uh, the two settings that I changed are uh, conic patch draw mode which I changed it from 1 to 3 which produces this extra bit here that makes an effort at predicting what the orbit will be like after the encounter and you can see the apoapsis is much lower and uh, the other setting is I changed the draw limit from 2 to 5 and so now we're heading for an encounter. I'll speed up time just a little bit until I get to about here, and then I'll drop back to a thousand. 
and we're going to see what this encounter is going to do to their flight path. It's definitely going to change it, as you can see. And I'm wondering if afterwards they're going to have enough of a trajectory change to allow them to perhaps begin to do some braking. All right. Let's see here. The moon is coming in. They're approaching the encounter. Okay. Now they're in moon orbit. Now they're moving out. Now they're back in curve in orbit with their orbit changed drastically. And what is the periapsis? 190 kilometers. Dropped considerably from the, what was it, uh, 1,050 kilometers that it started out as. Low enough to force a reduction in time compression. And so now. Obviously, it's still crossing the moon's orbit twice each time around. There's a fair amount of inclination because it came from Minmus. And there was some bad piloting that, that was factored in there, too. So, it's still possible for them to have another moon encounter. And if the one encounter fixed their orbit this much, if they have another encounter, also coming from down up from up here to down here on this side then it could easily lower the periapsis even more and so I'm going to time compress ahead and cut to whenever there's another encounter and as you can see we have another encounter coming up and this one has the apoapsis coming in even closer and it's blinking so much right now, I can't see what the periapsis is going to be like, so we're going to have to wait and see. And once again, I will continue to ride the, uh, what is this, 1000 warp, 1000 x time acceleration. I'm going to continue to ride that until I get into about here, and then I'm going to step it down a little bit, right around here. Step the time acceleration down to 100x and see what we have when this encounter happens. The moon periapsis is a million and a half meters, so 1,500 kilometers, 1,565. I still can't see what the projected periapsis is going to be. Let's see if I can get a look at it from here. Um, it might be close enough for aero braking. That would be great. If it's close enough to put the thing inside the atmosphere, we can do an aero braking maneuver and these guys can come home. And if we don't jettison the lower stage until we're close in like that, then it will not be left out here in orbit drifting around like this other piece of crap, the Lander 1B debris which I still need to figure out how to get that down. Okay, let's jump our time compression down to 100x. I realize that will make things take longer, but I'm okay with that. Um, the more I look at it, the more it looks like the periapsis is not showing on this purple orbit because it's inside the planet, which puts us on definitely a return trajectory, all by doing nothing and getting a couple of gravity assist maneuvers from the moon. Now, I've decided to try this after I saw a video by Scott Manley, and I don't remember which one, so don't ask, in which he pointed out that when you're talking about gravity assist maneuvers and planetary moon body whatever type flybys that when you're coming in from the high side of an orbit the encounter will reduce the apoapsis and very likely the periapsis as well if you came in from if the encounter happened on this slide 
this side over here, then it would increase the periapsis and the apoapsis. And uh, if it was, if it happened just right, the resulting trajectory could take you completely out of the system. Okay, so let's just zoom in here. We are very close to the encounter. There's our moon periapsis, which at this time acceleration is less than a minute away. Okay, are we showing a periapsis over here yet? No, it's inside the planet. These guys are coming home. All right. All by just doing nothing. Somebody once said that one of the most difficult parts of wisdom is knowing when to do nothing. This is one of those times. Knowing when not to act or when not to speak is crucial sometimes. Okay, we are now out of the encounter. We're in a Kerbin orbit. The apoapsis is 18,537 kilometers. And the periapsis, as you can see, is within the body of Kerbin itself. As a matter of fact, it's getting deeper within is what, it, is what it looks like. It's hard to tell from this angle, but it does look like it's going deeper in. So, these guys have been in flight for 39 days, 13 hours, and 18 minutes, minutes and uh, they are more than ready to go home. So, let's switch back here. Yes, they're very ready to go home because uh, apparently Palsfell Kerman and Shepgel Kerman are very not thrilled with Billy Bobvis Kerman because apparently he was in charge of stocking their food synthesizer for the trip and for some reason it doesn't produce anything but sauerkraut and beans and as you can well imagine it's getting pretty ripe in there getting pretty doggone ripe indeed and we are coming in fast so let's cut off with the time compression or back it down once again we have no fuel we have RCS fuel but no thrusters the ship cannot maneuver at all except to change its orientation its attitude and that takes forever because this thing is a great big whale but these guys are coming in. Let's take another quick look at the map. Yeah, they are definitely returning. So, rescue mission is not necessary in this case. All we had to do was wait and let nature take its course. We're going to hit the automatic time deceleration thing here real soon when I get below a certain altitude. All right. And at this point, we don't care where we land as long as it's on Kerbin. And that much we're guaranteed. We are screaming in at 2,800 meters per second and accelerating. We'll start slowing down when we hit the atmosphere. Okay, we're back to 1x time, and I think right now would be a good time to jettison that lower stage. Because we certainly don't need that attached when the parachute opens. And oh yeah, let's hope the parachute works. We are decelerating quickly, but we're over a mountain range, so let's go ahead and deploy that chute. Direct chute out. Decelerating hard now. Massive G-forces encountered. 
but these guys don't care. They're going home. Decelerating very nicely. G-forces back in the green zone. Less than 150 meters per second now. Parachute deploy, and we are settling down at a nice, easy 8.2 meters per second. Welcome home, boys. I'm sure the first thing you want is some fresh air. I know I would if I was in that cockpit. Can you imagine that? 39 days of beans and sauerkraut being the only thing you can eat? Okay, we're setting down in a valley between these mountains, apparently. Just about there. And we're down. Billy Bob Vispel's Hell and Shepgal are home. After 39 days, 14 hours, 56 minutes in space on a mission they really thought they weren't going to come back from. So let's do them a favor and end the flight. Let's see, just for grins here, what kind of stuff do we have here? Okay, we had no uh, problems or damage on the flight. That's good. Highest altitude, 45,108 kilometers. Highest velocity, 3.1 kilometers per second. And a long distance covered. Although, during re-entry, they ended up having to deal with 26.5 Gs. So, I'm quite sure that... Uh, they're going to take a while scraping themselves off the back of the car, uh, cockpit. Meanwhile, we have no actual flights in progress. We have debris in orbit and, okay, debris at the launch pad, we don't care about. Because that'll be cleared off for the next flight. But this debris in orbit, I'd like to get rid of that too. And I don't want to just switch to it and end flight. I actually want to rendezvous with it and bring it down. I'm going to switch to this one just simply, well, if I can. Apparently I can't because it's not listed on the flights in progress. Oh, well, we'll deal with those things another time. In the meanwhile... We've had a successful end, a very unlikely, unexpected successful end to what could have been a flight that would obviously have ended very badly. And now while the guys are scraping themselves off the cockpit and heading out for some fresh air and anything to eat besides sauerkraut and beans, we will leave you and join in the next episode where we'll find something else interesting to do. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video. And I'll be back with more soon. Take it easy. I'm out of here.